Hi there, I'm Karen McCarthy and it's time to Karenize. This is going to be kind of an impromptu extra um, because I was getting ready to make some St. Patrick's Day, just little goodies to take to some people that I'm going to be seeing in the next few days. And I thought I would share. You can do this for any occasion, any season, um, any holiday. You can just make something super quick out of pill bottles. So this is my version of pill bottle gnomes for St. Patrick's Day. Let me put the camera down. And I've got three pill bottles. I put just a little bit of rice. You can put whatever you want to. Just weight them down a little bit so they don't knock over so easily. I have measured pieces of a St. Patrick's Day type fabric. I just kind of held it up to the bottle, wrapped it around. It doesn't even have to go all the way around because we're going to have these cute little beards. So I have pieces of fur. I use, I use scrap pieces, so um, a lot of times I just, I have a little bucket that I keep all my scraps in, and a lot of times I have enough. I've used those up, so I had to cut these. Uh, and then I found these at the thrift store. I got, I think, six of them for a dollar, so I thought they were super cute. Um, little pom-poms for noses. You can use, um, people use wooden beads. They stuff little pieces of nylon or sock. You can use whatever you want. And then I got a little box of just little charms like this that were not painted at Hobby Lobby. And I painted some. Dollar Tree a lot of times has these. We have not had the St. Patrick's Day ones at our store, but I know there are some out there at some stores. So I've got some of those to choose from, and I think that's all I need. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put a little glue around the edge up here and put the... Whoops, this one gets this cap. Put the cap on, and of course I put the super glue, or I mean super glue, hot glue, too low, I think. Yeah, I need to ah, put it up a little bit higher, and that way the, the lid just doesn't ever come off and the rice comes out. All right, so there's one. Oh, I actually got it on crooked. Usually I put lids on, or I got it on straight. I usually put them on crooked. My husband laughs at me. I don't know what it is, but I can't, just can't seem to get lids on straight. Okay, that one's on. Oh, my glue is very stringy tonight. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. So if you're watching, let me know where you are. I love to know where my my subscribers and my watchers are. If you haven't subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe. And those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. It helps my channel so much when you subscribe, make comments, give me one of these, share, all those kinds of things really help. Now, since I'm doing a hat instead of the stocking cap kind of thing, I'm gonna finish both edges of the, the clothing that I'm gonna put on. So I'm just gonna run a thin, thin bead of glue. Get my finger under there and fold it up. I made it purposely a bit longer than I needed just so I would be able to do this. If I'm doing a stocking cap, you know, or the normal, the traditional gnome caps, I usually don't do the top because um, the hat comes down and covers that. But just in case with this kind of a hat, there's no flexibility in pulling it down, so we're going to finish both sides, or both ends, top and bottom. I guess that's not an end. You know what I mean. <laughs> cool. Okay, did that stick? Yeah. With super, with, I keep wanting to say super glue tonight. With hot glue, especially the low temp that I'm using here, you have to work fairly quickly or it doesn't stick, but that looks like I did okay. So I might as well hem all of them. This side, there's not really a, this side's a little bit blurrier, so I'm going to make that the side that I glue on. Some fabrics, there's a definite right side and wrong side, and you want to make sure that you're putting your hem on the correct side. Let me know if you have made gnomes before, what kind you make. We do all different kinds. In fact, I have some ladies coming tomorrow night to make a the regular sized St. Patrick's Day gnome. So we have a little group of ladies coming, so that's gonna be exciting, they're always fun. And if you do other kinds of crafts, I would love to know what kinds of crafts you do. 
I do a little bit of everything, whatever I see. If I see something that I really like in a store, but I don't want to pay the price, I will take a picture and come home and figure out a way to make it. I do buy things in stores quite often, but if I can make it instead for half or a quarter of the price, I'm going to. And when I'm taking the pictures, I'm, I'm usually filling my cart with all kinds of craft supplies, so I don't feel too bad. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so the next step is to just glue these. Next step is to take the glue off my fingers. Cannot function when I have glue on my fingers. Okay, so I am just going to make sure that this is... Oh, I didn't make it... Hmm... Well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull it up to the top because I made it, you can see there's about that much space with my hems. I made my hems a little bit big, but I have a way to, to fix that. So I am just going to, I need it to cover up here because, because that, like I say, that hat is not going to cover thing. In fact, we'll, we'll see if it even works with this hat. If not, I'll make another hat. These are just so cute. But we'll see. Since this... I tried to get pill bottles that the hat would fit on the best. Whoops. But they were either too wide or not wide enough. All right. Let me grab another couple of glue sticks. I don't know about you guys, but if it's, well, it's any hot glue, hot glue gun I use, it seems like we just go through glue sticks a lot faster than we used to. So I don't know what the deal is. Okay, then I'm going to, first, where is my comb? Here it is. I'm gonna comb out the hair, the, the fur. Now, if you have never cut faux fur, the trick is that you don't, Put your scissors all the way underneath and all the way on top because you will cut off this fringed look and you'll just have a squared off beard. You want to go just, I'll sh kind of show you here. Take your scissors and go just under the fabric and cut that way instead of going under the whole thing. And then you'll still have that fringed look. But your beard will shed. So I'm just gonna, this one's not too bad. I'm gonna just comb out any of the stuff that's wanting to come out. So I got a bit. So don't do this when you have a fan blowing because it'll go right in your face. So let me just get all the beards set. They tend to have messy looking beards if you don't do this, like kind of like my hair in the morning. Well, it's not even as bad as my hair, but look how much came out of that one. And the last one. Ooh, that one has a lot. There we go. So first thing I'm going to do on the beards is put a little hem on the top because we're going to be able to see that most likely and we want it to look finished instead of a raw edge. Finger protectors are great. I tend to feel too klutzy when I'm using them so I just try to be really careful. Uh, there was some more to come off but I guess not. Okay, real quick him. So I will be making Easter Bunny ones. They are so cute. Oh my goodness, they're cute. And I love these little, little miniature size ones. I started doing miniature ones when I had this little thing. Poof, I got poof, it's beard in my face. Um, I've talked about it before, I think, but I had this little, about this big, little pink and black panda, plastic panda that came out of one of those claw machines. And I really liked it, but all of a sudden I was like, you know, I bet I could make a really cute gnome out of that. And I have it in my car on my dashboard. It's so stinking cute. And then I got to thinking about what else could I use? Because I couldn't find any more of those little critters. And that's when the pill bottle thought came. And I thought I had invented it, and then I found other videos on YouTube. So I wasn't the first one to think of it, but it's okay. Okay. I'm going to just glue it this way. Make sure you're covering the seam or hole in 
or I don't know if you call it a hole, but you know, where you didn't have the fabric. And see, it covers that perfectly. So once I've got it on, I'm just gonna lift it up and, and glue the rest of it down. all right let's get this let's see if I okay this one's going to work a little bit better I won't have to camouflage the bottom get this started on there and then stick another glue stick in see I'm, I'm out of glue already it's crazy I didn't do my little trick put a little bit of glue there let me get some off of here and glue that new glue stick in and it won't flip out. They tend to flip off. Well, that sounds terrible, but you know what I mean? They just flip out of the gun and flop on the floor or wherever they want to go. Okay. And there's my beard. I'm just gonna put a T on this one. When I'm doing a, the, a, the other kind of hat where I can pull it down, I usually put the beard up to here and then pull the hat down over the lid. But with this, these, I'm gonna have to glue it all the way up to the top. All right, let me get the sides glued down. Make sure you don't get hair in there that you're gluing down. And there is the second beard. These really don't take much time. I mean, the I think it takes more time to assemble everything. Oh good, I did that one I'm right too. To assemble everything than it does to actually make it. Woo, just about got myself with some hot glue all over my finger. You have to be a little coordinated, but don't worry if you're not because I'm not the most coordinated thing and I can do it. You might end up with a little bit of hot glue burns. Make sure that's coming down to the bottom there. To cover the bottom. I keep forgetting people want to know what I have my glue gun in. That is a napkin holder and a silicone oven mitt that I got from Dollar Tree. Now, one of my friends said she's been looking for those silicone oven mitts for a long time, and at ours, look at all those strings. At ours, she hasn't been able to find them for quite a while. So I don't know if they're not getting them anymore or what the deal is. But I have seen in the Crafter Square section what I was originally looking for when I got this idea from a, a friend that worked at the Dollar Tree. Um, they have little silicone mats that you can roll out and lay your gun on. So you're not getting hot glue on something that sticks to really bad. The nice thing about the silicone is it just pops right off. It also, um, paint cleans off of them much easier. Okay. Now I need to fix this one up real quick. So let me grab, where is it? I may decide to put it on all of them, who knows? I have this faux fur trim. Uh, if I can find the end, <laughs> there it is. And I'm just gonna, eek. I had this nasty habit of getting my cord for my glue gun stuck on my leg when I go to get up. Not good because you can end up with your hot glue gun on your leg or your foot. So I'm just going to put that at the bottom there like that and it will camouflage the fact that I did not quite measure that right. I'm just going to do it all the way around. And that way if the beard gets flipped up for some reason it's still covered. Nice thing about this kind of stuff for trim. Oh, look at that. It sheds. Um, if you cut a piece that's, oh, my heater, I have a little space heater here. It blew this up and it looked like a moth flying around for a minute. Um, 
if you don't measure it quite quite right and you have to piece it together, it's so fluffy you can't tell. All right, there we go. Yeah, that's cute. I'm going to have to do it on all of them. <laughs> okay, so let's do that real quick. Oops, did that one already. And see, there I go. My foot gets tangled around the cord. And I, I move my cord clear out, but I guess when I move my glue gun, it moves it back in. And then I move my foot and don't realize that the glue gun cord is stuck on my foot. I have just about burned myself a few times because of that. It's just the way my, my craft table has to be kind of out from the wall because we've got so much. There, see, I didn't do that again. We've got so much furniture against the wall that there's no room for it. So I have to have a little extension cord. Gosh, I got to get, there we go. I'm going to get it here. Sorry, I'm a little distracted trying to get this glued in. There we go. Um, have to have my glue gun with an extension cord and so the cord and, and everything is down by my feet. I guess I could solve that problem by working on the other side of the table, but I don't know. Half the stuff I need is on this side of the table, so I'll just have to learn to not catch my foot. On Oh, that thing's really shedding. Um, on the cord. Sorry, I am like losing my train of thought. I can't do two things at once, obviously. So if I get quiet when I'm doing something, it's because I can't do two things at once. Talk and craft. I'm shedding stuff. Crafting can be messy. I feel bad when I hear people have to do it on their dining room table or something because I know how messy I get down here in my craft room. We turned our basement, half of our basement was um, like a family room that once the kids left, we didn't use anymore. So we turned it into a hobby room. When my husband was laid off from all that COVID shutdown stuff, he built a beautiful, I should show you a picture of it. If I remember, I will take a picture of it. Uh, beautiful workbench because he does fly tying for fishing and reloading for hunting and he built this gorgeous workbench because he was stuck in a corner of our storeroom on this little tiny workbench so now he's got this great one he put a big sink at the end of it for me for my crafting so I no longer have to take my paint stuff after I'm done either into my bathroom down here because our, our master bedroom is down here too um, or upstairs to the kitchen, which was a pain either way. And so I can just do it right here and have a sink dedicated to paint. All right, so there. Looks cute. Okay, now let's get this back here out of the way. We are going to... I don't know. I might have to get a little bit creative. Let's, we'll see. Let's put the noses on. And see if I need to do something different with this hat. No, nah, I think it's going to be okay. They're just kind of funky looking. Ah, I glued it. All right, so I'm going to glue this to the lid. And I have a little bit of green, green glitter where it got stuck on the nose. Come on. Just trim it off here. Maybe it needs, let's see. With crafting, you just constantly improvise. Shall we put, I don't know, that might be too much. This is when I wish it was live so I could get your opinion. I think that's gonna be too much. But let's, this has a tendency to really curl on itself. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna look cute up there. I might think of something else. Okay. They barely cover <laughs> the lid. I should have made it so that they could take the the lid off and use this as a little, little hidey place for special things. I've made those before where you do it on a like a baby food jar and you put the hat on the lid 
And then when the lid's closed, it, it looks like the hat is on, but you can take the lid off and hide your little precious things inside. They're kind of fun. All right. And then I just want to put a little shamrock. His nose got kind of pushed up. I just want to put a little shamrock here. I may have to think of something to put around here. I don't know. We'll see. I won't think on camera though, because you don't need to hear me think. <laughs> well, you won't be able to hear me think, but you know what I mean. Put a little four leaf clover here. And put one. I like this one. This is my favorite because it has a little, I don't know if you can see, a little heart cut out. It's always fun to take some little gift when you like meet someone for lunch or coffee or um, two of these are for, well, this was weird. I don't know what happened. I'll have to fiddle with that. It's, it shows the edge there and it doesn't usually do that. So I'll have to fiddle with that. Um, two of these are for gals who are bringing their kids to a kids workshop that I'm doing this, this Saturday for St. Patrick's Day. Just some fun little projects for kids. Most of the supplies come from Dollar Tree. I really like Dollar Tree because where I live, we don't have a Michaels. We have a Joann's, but they don't have a ton of things for crafting supplies. We don't have a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby. They're all a couple of hours away. So, okay, there he is. A cute little pill bottle gnome. I may think of something to do. I don't know what, I don't know. Like right here, I've got a little bit of the, the lid showing. So I'll finagle this just a little bit and I will take a picture of the finished project and show you later. So thanks for watching. Okay, so I thought I would show you what I ended up doing. Um, you can see it a little bit in the front, but I just put fur around here and I made it down like this, like he's wearing a robe. So not quite the look I was going for up here, but I still think he's cute. So you can get creative and make just about anything work. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you later.